The Scuba Diver Magazine podcast is sponsored by Scuba Pro, who are celebrating their 60th year of being an iconic scuba brand, and Scuba Pro has a few offers that I'm going to break down later on in this podcast. Hi, all of you wonderful scuba divers out there. Welcome to the Scuba Diver Magazine podcast. Uh, this week, a warning for a TikTok challenge that is out there. Uh, there always seems to be some kind of TikTok challenge where someone ends up hurting themselves. Um, it doesn't really affect us as scuba divers. It's not scuba specific. Uh, I just don't want any scuba divers to get caught up in this challenge and end up hurting themselves. Uh, there's also a doping scandal in the freediving community and, uh, and of course, a few other news stories. Um, so yeah, this TikTok challenge, it's um, its known as the Boat Jumping Challenge. And over the past three years, people have posted footage of themselves participating in this Boat Jumping Challenge on social media. And it started, yeah, back in like 2021. Uh, one person can be seen wearing a life jacket as they jump off the back of a speedboat as it's going. And after the person jumps off, other people in life jackets also jump in and... A few other people have uh, like jumped on the bandwagon and they, they're doing flips and jumping, but it's effectively jumping off of speedboats. And I've seen a few of them where they're jumping off the front, which of course is incredibly dangerous because if you jump off a boat that's moving, you're just going to go underneath it. First, you're going to get hit by the boat, which is going to suck. But then you have to wait for the propeller and hope that you're going to avoid said propeller. Uh, so, yeah, just all sorts of stupid here. Um, but on, um, I think it was around the 4th of July, first responders described the dangers of jumping off a moving boat, not just from the front, but even jumping off at the back, as it can potentially cause people to break their necks and drown. Um Jim Dennis of Alabama's Charlesburg Rescue Squad told uh, WNBA News that the boat jumping challenge led to four easily avoidable drowning deaths in the state, which occurred in the last six months. Um, they say that they were doing a TikTok challenge. It's where you get in a boat going at a high rate of speed. You jump off the side of the boat. Don't dive. Uh, you're just jumping off feet first and you just kind of lean into the water, uh, he said about the other uh, people who died. So it's just... Yet, yeah, no, don't jump off of a, a moving speedboat. Um, whether you're jumping off the front, jumping off the back or the sides, uh, it just tends to be a, a bad idea. And if ever the boat is moving at any great speed, yeah, if your feet hit the water first, then it's, it's almost like stepping out of a moving car your feet are going to get pulled out from under you and then just your top half is just going to smack down on the uh, on the water so don't do this um if you're uh, if you're listening and you think oh that looks like a bit of fun uh no and uh i just figured because divers we tend to spend a lot of time around boats uh yeah it is just not a a, a smart idea uh there's actually one that i can see at the moment and it's two lads um and they're jumping off the bow of this relatively small boat. But yeah, you can physically see where the boat hits one of them and rides up over them. So yeah, it is just all sorts of stupid. So um, don't do this if you're, um, uh, if you're listening. The next news story is um, uh, top Croatian freedivers have been banned for doping violations. And so one is an ADA world record holder, having been banned indefinitely from vertical blue uh, depth competitions after arriving in the Bahamas, allegedly in possession of performance-enhancing drugs. So four of these performance-enhancing drugs were found in the luggage of world record holder Peter Klovar and another Croatian competitor uh, whose name I'm not going to attempt, uh, Vitamar heavens, uh, I don't know, Vitamar something, um, on Long Island on the 4th of July. According to the Vertical Blue organisers, they said that the prescription drugs were on one or both of the world anti-doping agencies and Vertical Blue banned substances lists for athletes. The competition itself doesn't begin until the 20th 
of July, but all Vertical Blue competitors are required to sign a no doping agreement before registration and competition organizers were involved in the search. A recording has been released of the free divers discussing the drugs that they were carrying and those they thought may already be detectable in their systems, with female Croatian freediver Sandra Del uh, Deliha, uh, who had travelled with the men but was not registered as a Vertical Blue competitor. So the two competitors have been summarily banned from Vertical Blue 2023 and future events, and the organisers say their cases have been referred to the Disciplinary Committee of Competitive Freediving's World Governing Body, ADA. Clovar put out a statement on social media saying that everything that is happening now is incredible and false and doesn't correspond to the truth. We are currently advised not to make any detailed statements. Our lawyers are taking action because things are out of hand and serious. We are athletes that are clean have always been, and this will all be soon clarified. We believe anyone knowing us or training with us already knows this from personal experience. Um, Clover is currently the world record holder in the free immersion discipline, having dived to 128 meters in May, and is a Croatian national record holder in constant weight no fins discipline. So the two divers and their legal team have a few days to um, uh, to figure things out and sort things out, see if they are actually clean and legal to go diving and, uh, and compete, or um, or whether yeah these uh, performance enhancing drugs were in their position uh, possession and um, and yeah affecting their um, uh, uh, their skills their their ability to go uh, to go free diving. Uh, time will tell. Um, yeah, they only have from uh, the 20th of July, the uh, Vertical Blue. It's, a, it's an annual event. Um, it's newly sponsored by Garmin, and it takes place from the 20th to the 30th of July. Uh, all sorts of different free diving disciplines in this. So time will tell, and um, yeah, we'll um, we'll try and keep you up to date if, uh, if anything changes. Uh, in other news, crowds had gathered at the Yorkshire seaside town of Redcar to watch lifeboat volunteers carry out a demonstration demonstration rescue on Saturday the 1st of July. It was part of an RNLI Flag Day fundraising campaign, but the onlookers were treated to more than they had expected when the crews were called to respond to a real-life mayday call from a boat skipper who had lost contact with their wreck divers. So at 1.13 in the afternoon, the volunteers' pages sounded and the crews of the Atlantic 85 Leicester Challenge 3 and D-Class inshore lifeboat Eileen May Loach Thomas were tasked with finding four scuba divers who had been diving the wreck of the Dimitri, a uh, cargo ship that sank off Redcar Coast in 1953. Visibility was good, with a modern breeze and choppy sea conditions as the two lifeboats headed out and began their search. Whilst exciting for crowds to witness a genuine shout, it turned out not to be the most challenging of rescues for the volunteers. Um, the um, uh, the ILB's helms and Cameron Bond said, Once we arrived at the area, we commenced a search and located all four divers within a few minutes. We got all the divers into the lifeboats and returned them safely to shore. The the crowds that had come to, to the seafront to see our Flag Day rescue demonstration actually got to see the real thing, commented Red Car Aaron Elide. Chairman Dave Cox. It uh, was a perfect example of a well-executed rescue operation with all four casualties being returned safely to shore. A job well done. Um, yeah, I, I've only um, I've only seen uh, RNLI in action a couple of times. I think. Um, I've never been involved myself uh, or, or anyone who I've been diving with, but I've been in the areas where um, where RNLI had to uh, had to rescue divers. The uh, the first one was the Farne Islands, and that was a uh, an individual who had some kind of heart uh, problem whilst at depth, and um, and yeah, the, the the speedboat had to had to get them straight back to uh, to shore. They were then picked up by the helicopter and taken straight to uh, to a hospital. The um, the second one, the second one from from my perspective was quite a, um, a, a relatively funny story where one of our divers they had forgotten their uh, motion sickness tablets, and they, um, they they hadn't taken it that morning and decided to just like try it out and 
they were fine for a bit, went on the dive, everything was okay, but like on the surface, just waiting to be picked up, just that constant motion of the, of the waves just set him off. So got him back on the uh, on the dive boat, and he, he's like like strewing all of his gear off. But then whilst we're uh, we're all like de-kitting, Skipper tells us that there's a radio call saying that there's a missing diver in the water somewhere. All vessels in the area can can we like help look? So we're just driving in circles for I think it was like best part of half an hour maybe an hour and um and this poor lad who's uh, who's feeling seasick it was just like we'll we'll get back to dry land as, as soon as possible we just got to look for this diver um they um uh Lai did find him he was holding on to a uh, a boy of some description and uh, and he was perfectly fine i think he was just drifting away with the current um but yeah, this uh, this poor chat with seasickness. Um, I, I don't think he ever forgot his medication again. Um, but yeah, well done to uh, to RNLI. Always uh, good to see the lads and uh, and lasses um, sort of out and about helping us in our times of need. So as I mentioned at the start, this podcast is sponsored by the scuba diving giant Scuba Pro, who have been making great scuba diving equipment since 1963. And Scuba Pro makes everything from masks and snorkels and fins to wetsuits, dry suits, dive computers. They have a beautiful range of regulators as well. And they have a great range of products that scuba divers love because if you take their fins, for example, they still make their jet fins, which are a design from the 1960s, but divers still love them because they simply got it right the first time. The only upgrade that the jet fins have ever had over the years is to add spring heel straps. And Scuba Pro also makes some of the most cutting edge fins today from their Sea Wing Nova and Supernova fins. So Scuba Pro covers the entire range of diving equipment from their heritage equipment to modern technology. And right now Scuba Pro has a pair of offers at participating dealers. The first one is a free Octo offer. If you buy a Scuba Pro S620Ti or the D420 with either a Mark 19 Evo or the Mark 25 Evo first, stage you're going to get yourself a s270 octo for free which is a great way to start building a regulator set and start saving yourself some money the d420 may look a little bit different to some other second stages but it breathes beautifully the s620 is a combination of the best features of other scuba pro second stages in a great all-rounder of a second stage. The free Octo offer also extends to their S600 with a Mark 25 or a Mark 17 Evo first stage, which is one of their most popular regulators. Again, a very strong all-rounder. That and the G260 or the new G260 Carbon Black Tech with either a Mark 25 or a Mark 19 Evo first stage, you'll get yourself a free R105 Octo. Now, I know that was a lot of numbers that I just threw at you, but if you visit your local Scuba Pro dealer, there's a dealer locator on the Scuba Pro website where you can find your nearest and they can help you find the right regulator for you. The second offer is a dry suit promotion, which is a great way to save some money again or get a fancier dry suit combination in your budget. If you buy a Neoprene Everdry 4 or an Exo Dry dry suit, you can get a free K2 light undersuit set or a K2 medium thickness undersuit for £99, which has a suggested retail price of £298, so you're saving yourself some money. Or if you prefer a trilaminate dry suit, if you buy the Evertech Breathable or the Definition Dry, you will get the K2 Extreme undersuit for free, which is a great way to stay warmer in the water. Personally, I tend to wear my dry suit year round here in the UK, so a dry suit is a great investment. Both of these offers are running until the end of July in certain regions and participating dealers, so do ask them first before you turn up demanding for free scuba pro equipment. And there was also news that there was a fire at uh, Ammonite System HQ. So this was a social media post, didn't get to... Um, 
Oh, I haven't found much other information outside of this uh, this Instagram post. But it reads, Dear fellow divers, we regret to inform you that a fire broke out in our Warsaw headquarters last week. Fortunately, nobody was harmed, and despite some significant damage, luckily it's nothing we can't handle. However, we still have some bad news to share due to this unforeseen circumstance. We will need time to rebuild, and as a result... We anticipate a production downtime of approximately four to six weeks. During this period, we will not be able to fulfill your orders. The office section remains open uh, or operational and is working continuously. If you have any questions, please feel free to contact us. Uh, we sincerely apologize for the inconvenience and kindly ask for your patience and understanding during these challenging times. Um, yeah, um, sad news. Um, obviously, it didn't burn to the ground completely but yeah I, and i don't know information so i'm just speculating here uh, ammonites they deal with a lot of um, uh, torches and uh, and heating systems so i'm wondering if it was something to do with the um, uh, the batteries i don't know uh maybe a another press release will uh, will come out but um yeah if, if you've got your eyes and you're waiting on something from ammonites uh you may have to uh, to wait a little bit longer i'm afraid and the uh, the final news story is that divers have new imagery that's lighting up Scapa Flow warships. So this is a team of international scuba divers, including academics from the University of Dundee and Newcastle. Um, they've taken advantage of the recent exceptional weather and special permission to capture new images of two of Scapa Flow's protected warship shipwrecks in spectacular detail. So the project is being delivered by the Scapa 100 initiative. Uh, it's definitely worth looking up. Uh, by working closely with Huskin Charters under license from the Ministry of Defence, the team regularly survey Orkney wrecks and have said that they are delighted to be collaborating with the Scapa Flow Museum and the National Museum of the Royal Navy on this project. The iconic World War I cruise of the Hampshire was built in 1903. Uh, it was lost in just 15 minutes after striking a German mine off Marrick Head on Orkney's northwest coast on the 5th of June 1916. No more than a dozen of the 749 crew members survived, and among the dead was Britain's War Minister, Lord Kitchener. So, you may have heard of the name Lord Kitchener. It's probably been um, because Kitchener's it's Kitchener's face on the famous wartime recruitment posters. Uh, in 1916, he was probably as well known across the empire as King George V. And the field marshal had been leading a delegation to Russia in support of the Eastern Front. And his death came less than a week after the Navy had failed to deliver a second Trafalgar at Jutland. Together, the two events shook public and political confidence in the senior service. The other shipwreck, the HMS Vanguard, was a dreadnought battleship assigned to the Britain's home and grand fleets. She saw action in the Battle of Jutland in 1916, and much of her career was spent on the North Sea Patrol, until on the 9th of July 1917, so just over a year later, a series of magazine explosions sank her almost instantly, killing all but two of the 845 men on board. The wreck that lies in around 34 metres of water was protected as a war grave in 1984, though by this time it had already been heavily salvaged for non-ferrous metals. But like HMS Hampshire, however, it remains a controlled site under the Protection of Military Remains Act, meaning that diving is normally forbidden. So you can't go on this shipwreck. So actually getting these images and, and 3D scans back is quite cool to be able to, uh, to, to basically see what's down there. With MOD permission, the Hampshire, which is inverted at a maximum depth of 68 metres, so this one's pretty deep, uh, it has been partially salvaged. Uh, one of its propellers is on display at the Scapa Flow Museum, which celebrates the Royal Navy having made Scapa Flow its principal base throughout both world wars. It's now set to use the newly captured imagery to display enhanced digital 3D models of the Hampshire and the Vanguard.
The divers carried out the latest studies with great care and professionalism. According to the museum's culture team manager, Nick Hewitt, the end result will be an improved digital resource for visitors to the museum and one which helps to tell the story of Orkney's roles in the world wars as the UK's key naval base and the immense losses borne out there. Currently, only one of uh, five museums shortlisted as the best of 2023, Scapa Flow Museum on the island of Hoi recently signed a collaborative deal with the National Museum of the Royal Navy to clear the way for diving to take place over official war graves. Which will be nice, um, but of course time will tell. It has to go through committees and all that kind of decision making. Uh, but yeah, it's nice to see that there's now more information from the um, from the Scapa Float Museum and scuba divers are us like helping create all of this imagery and these um, these three D models. Uh, you can see some of them. I'll put the other uh, links down in the description below. And um, and yeah, you can check out the um, the Scapa One Hundred initiative. Otherwise, I noticed on scuba.com, they're now a shearwater distributor. Um, so if you've been watching a, a shearwater computer and, um, and yeah, you've been looking at scuba.com and you haven't found anything, uh, yeah, they've got everything uh, in stock at the moment and all the, uh, the information on the, uh, the computers as well. So, um, yeah, just something that I um, uh, that I noticed was I was browsing at the internet that uh, yeah, scuba.com is a, a shearwater distributor as well. Fourth Element also has their end of season sale on their website. Get up to seventy uh, percent off. Uh, it's just where they sell through a lot of their uh, their older stock. So it might not have all of the sizes, but hey, if it if if it stocks the size that you um, that you're looking for, uh, yeah, it can be a great way to uh, to get a great deal. Got everything from yeah t-shirts and hoodies to, uh, to yeah uh, thermocline long sleeve top, uh, men's Halo 3D a full suit, Arctic expedition leggings, uh, neoprene gloves, uh, all sorts of bits and bobs. This is just the uh, the men's one that I'm I'm looking at. That's the women's version as well. Uh, so yeah, if you want some fourth element gear, uh, head over to uh, to fourthelement.com and uh, and check out their uh, their end of season sale. Otherwise, this week so far, I've been working on a. Um, uh, there, there was an interesting one from a, a Dan article on uh, on our magazine that I basically turned into a like analysis video. Someone was recounting their uh, their dive story, and after the dive, they had these little like aches and pains that uh, that they just kind of put down to uh, when I was taking my BCD off, my chest hurt a little bit, and um, and yeah, getting out. One, one of my legs uh, or my, my hip hurt a little bit. I just figured that was just, yeah, you know, getting old and like aches and pains. Um, and the, the pain went away when I sat down, but then came back when I stood up. And um, and yeah, just, just lots of little signs and symptoms and uh, and red flags. And, uh, and that will probably be next weekend going live. Uh, this weekend's I had top 10 little things that annoy scuba divers. Um, or at least annoy me as as a scuba diver. Um, so uh, so I just thought that might be a, a fun little video to um, uh, to do because it's little things like one thing that always bugs me, and it's it's only since I've been a, a professional diver is whenever someone puts on like a mask and a snorkel in a, a TV or a film, nine times out of ten, it's on the wrong side. Your snorkel has to go on your left side. It's, I mean, it doesn't have to. It's just most of them are designed to go on the left-hand side. And especially for scuba diving, goes on the left-hand side so it doesn't get in the way of your regulator. But yeah, if ever I see anyone like snorkeling or scuba diving on TV or or, uh, or film, yeah, that darn snorkel is on the wrong side. And I don't know why, it just bugs me. It's like saying flippers and goggles and stuff. It just really, like... Rubs rubs the scuba divers for the wrong direction for some reason, and uh, and I don't really know why. Um, so ten of those things. Um, if you're listening to it this weekend, or if you're listening to the podcast this weekend, you um, you should be able to find it over on our YouTube channel. Um, otherwise, a a video on diving in Tahiti, um, which is in uh, in French Polynesia, in like the middle of the Pacific. Um, yeah, it looks amazing. Um, I'm like editing this video using all this footage and you're like, oh, I want to go. Um, it's just unfortunate that it's literally on the other side of the planet for me. Um, maybe one day, um, 
maybe one day, always. And answering lots of questions on um, like combination inflators. So someone asked a an Ask Mark question the um, the other day, or the other week, sorry, I should say, because it takes me a while to actually produce the videos, um, of how do you wash a combination inflator, which is like a standard BCD inflator, but it has a second stage built into it, so you can effectively breathe from your BCD inflator. Um, it's, it's one way to either add a third second stage for even extra more redundancy, or you can have a really lightweight regulator set because you don't need an octo in effect. Um, you just donate your primary, the one that you're breathing from, if your buddy runs out of gas, and then you yourself swap to your BCD inflator uh, effectively. And someone was asking how you wash it, because it's a second stage, you have to be... Um, uh, when we're washing our regulators, we have to be quite careful after the dive, especially when they're pre uh, correction when they're depressurized. So they they kind of put put two and two together and came up with five. But because you don't want water getting into your second stage and then getting into your regulator hose, now. On a traditional regulator set, that is an issue. It's why we never press our purge button when we're washing our regulators uh, when they're depressurized. With a integrated like combination inflator, not so much an issue. One, because you disconnect the, um, uh, the regulator from the BCD, so there's no way that water can get up that hose. Um, but also, if you press the purge button on a combination inflator, then it's like water's not going to really go anywhere. Um, it's a, it's a, an elegant design. Um, and then, of course, because I did that, people were asking a lot of questions about uh, combination inflators and, um, and whether they're any good, which uh, it kind of, it depends. Uh, it's, it's a clever design. Uh, if it was bad, then the manufacturers wouldn't make them. Um, but a lot of divers dislike them, mainly because scuba divers don't like change. Uh, but also, if you're breathing from it, uh, you've got to then control your buoyancy whilst breathing from your inflator, which can make it a little bit tricky. It's a bit like playing the flute. Uh, you've got to breathe and you've got to press the buttons uh, that are attached to the thing in your mouth. It's not impossible takes a little bit of practice. Um, remember, you've always got your other dump valves for your BCD. Um, so, yeah, it's just an extra consideration. But it is quite nice to have that, um, uh, like, stripped-down regulator. I know a guy who uh, used to work for one of the manufacturers who made one of these, and he said that, yeah, uh, you turn up on some dive boats and you get this uh, this regulator out, and they kind of... You get a lot of quizzical looks and raised eyebrows because he'd have a first stage, your primary second stage, your BCD hose, and a transmitter, and that's it. Really, if you strip everything down, that's kind of all you need because, yeah, you can breathe from your primary. You've got your, your BCD hose that controls your buoyancy, and you've got your alternate air source that's attached onto your BCD. And then as far as gauges, you've got your wireless air transmitter, yeah, that's it. If you want the lightest of lightest travel regulator sets, that's the way to do it. Um, he, um, he worked with Atomic Aquatics, so I imagine it was like an Atomic T3 or something, so it's titanium, so it's extra lightweight. Um, yeah, perfect, perfect for traveling. Uh, but yeah, some divers like to uh, like steer away from those combination inflators just because they are a little bit different, and yeah, it's it's outside of training so you'd have to practice at out of air drills just to make sure that you can control your buoyancy whilst breathing from your um your bcd in effect but that's what i've been working on this week um so yeah if you are heading out on boats this um this weekend or, or next week uh try not to jump off them when they're moving it's it's never a, a good thing try and wait until the um uh, till the engine is stopped or at least in neutral and um yeah keep keep on top of that uh, croatian free diving story um that's going to be quite interesting to uh, to see if they're um 
their di- uh, doping violations are, uh, are held up or, uh, or whether they can continue to um, uh, continue to compete. We will find out. Uh, otherwise, remember to head over to our website, scubadivermag.com. Check out all the awesome things that we do over there, as well as our magazine. Uh, it's a global magazine. Uh, we've got the three different territories and... Um, uh, one has just released a, a new edition. I forget which. Um, that they're, they're always releasing a new edition. Um, I actually got one with a recent um, purchase. I was buying some scuba equipment, and I received one of our own magazines. You know, ah, oh, cool. Um, anyway. Yeah, that's it uh, this week. Uh, don't forget to like, share, subscribe, do all that good social media stuff. All the links are down in the doobly-doo down underneath the uh, uh, video or podcast, depending on whether you're watching or listening. Uh, thank you for listening, everybody. And of course, safe diving. The Scuba Diver Magazine podcast is sponsored by Scuba Pro. For more information, head over to scubapro.johnsonoutdoors.com and find out more about their amazing scuba diving range.